We continue to follow this breaking news out of Valley Center this morning. A huge explosion. Tremendous amount of heat, smoke. Officers and authorities are worrying about getting traffic rerouting, getting people out of the area. On July 17, 2007, at about 9 a.m., an explosion in a flammable solvent storage tank at the Barton Solvents Facility rocked the town of Valley Center, Kansas, about 15 miles north of Wichita. This is no longer a safe area. They're requesting that you evacuate. After the explosion, the fire spread, igniting the contents of other storage vessels and eventually destroying the entire tank farm. The CSB issued a case study on the accident. Our goal is to help companies understand the hazards associated with the kinds of flammable liquids that were stored and transferred at Barton Solvents. At Barton, several factors combined to produce the initial explosion. Our investigation shows the need for companies to take extra precautions when handling what are known as non-conductive flammable liquids which tend to accumulate static electricity. Based on equipment testing, laboratory analysis, and interviews and documents, here's what the CSB believes most likely happened on July 17, 2007. Barton Solvents was located on the edge of a residential community. The facility was a wholesale distributor of solvents and other industrial chemicals, which were stored in large outdoor tanks. About 8.30 on the morning of the accident, a tanker trailer arrived to transfer a non-conductive solvent known as Varnish Makers and Painters, or VMNP naphtha, into a storage tank. Because liquid flowing through pipes and valves generates static electricity, which can ignite flammable vapor, the tank farm supervisor connected a cable between the truck and an electrical grounding station. In addition, all the equipment involved in transferring the liquid was bonded, that is, connected together with electrical conductors and grounded. Inside the 15,000-gallon storage tank, there was a device for measuring the liquid level. A metal tape, which was grounded, was suspended from pulleys and connected to a metal float by a loose, flexible linkage assembly. This linkage presented a hidden danger during the filling of the tank. The solvent was pumped from three tanker trailer compartments into the tank. As the hose was switched from one compartment to another, air entered the line, creating bubbles and turbulence inside the tank. A static electrical charge built up in the non-conductive liquid. Meanwhile, the space above the liquid was filled with an explosive mixture of vapor and air. The swirling, turbulent liquid caused the float to drift and rock, creating slack in the metal tape. This allowed a gap to form intermittently in the linkage assembly, interrupting the grounding of the float. The metal float accumulated a static electrical charge. About 9 a.m., a spark from static electricity ignited the vapor-air mixture, causing a massive explosion. The blast sent the storage tank rocketing into the air. Two more tanks quickly ruptured and released their contents into the rapidly expanding fire. As the fire raged inside the tank farm, other tanks burst and ignited, launching heavy steel tank lids 10 to 12 feet in diameter into the air. 20,000 gallons of flammable liquid were released into the spill containment area. Valves, pipes, and other heavy steel objects were hurled off-site and into the adjoining community. One tank lid struck a mobile home about 300 feet away. A pressure valve hit a neighboring business 400 feet away. 6,000 residents were evacuated. 11 residents and one firefighter required medical treatment. When transferring flammable liquids, it's standard industry practice to bond and ground storage vessels, tankers, and other equipment to prevent static discharges. But our investigation illustrates how normal bonding and grounding may not be enough to prevent ignition from static electric sparks. Our investigation found several conditions likely increased the accumulation of static electricity 
inside the storage tank at Barton. The CSB concluded that repeated starting and stopping of the pump, air in the transfer piping, and the likely presence of water and sediment in the tank all contributed to rapid static charge accumulation. Because VM&P naphtha is a poor conductor of electricity, the static charge accumulated faster than it could dissipate, even though the tank itself was grounded. A lot of common flammable liquids are particularly susceptible to ignition by static sparks. At normal temperatures inside a storage tank, they can produce the optimal amount of vapor to fuel an explosion. That's not so with gasoline, which is highly volatile and usually produces a vapor-air mixture that is too rich to ignite inside storage tanks. But the CSB noted that less volatile liquids, like VM&P naphtha, hexane, heptane, toluene, xylene, and benzene, form vapor-air mixtures that are within the flammable range and can ignite readily. Because most material safety data sheets do not communicate all the hazards of non-conductive flammable liquids, the CSB recommends companies take additional safety measures when handling these materials. The CSB said companies should consider purging storage tanks with an inert gas to remove oxygen, adding anti-static agents to non-conductive liquids, pumping liquids more slowly, and contacting manufacturers for additional safety information that may not be found on MSDSs. And the CSB case study also urges special precautions for tank-level floats that have a loose linkage assembly like the one at Barton. Companies should replace or modify these floats so that they remain properly bonded and grounded at all times. The CSB cautioned that while the most likely cause of the Barton explosion was sparking across the float linkage, explosions can occur in tanks without floats when there is a static discharge from the liquid itself. Companies should consult the CSB case study and its references for additional information. The CSB determined that the material safety data sheet for the solvent involved in the explosion did not adequately describe the explosive hazard or the precautions necessary to prevent ignition from static electricity. Material safety data sheets, or MSDSs, are required under federal OSHA regulations to warn workers about the potential hazards from chemicals. The MSDS for the naphtha supplied to Barton indicated the solvent could accumulate a static charge, which could spark and ignite vapor. But the MSDS did not warn that the naphtha could form a highly flammable vapor-air mixture inside a storage tank. And apart from normal bonding and grounding, the MSDS did not include any special precautions against static ignition. CSB investigators said the lack of warnings reflected a broader problem. We reviewed material safety data sheets for 62 non-conductive flammable liquids that are widely used in industry. The CSB found that the vast majority of these MSDSs had significant gaps. Of the 62 MSDSs covering a number of widely used non-conductive liquids, most failed to recommend specific precautions beyond bonding and grounding to prevent static sparks. Only three included electrical conductivity testing data and only one of the 62 MSDSs warned of the danger of an ignitable vapor-air mixture forming inside a storage tank. The CSB recommended that OSHA improve the information required in material safety data sheets for non-conductive flammable liquids. The CSB recommended that OSHA advise MSDS preparers to evaluate each product to determine its potential for accumulating static electricity and to form an ignitable vapor-air mixture inside a storage tank. Each liquid should be tested for electrical conductivity and the results included in the MSDS. The CSB also recommended that six major oil and chemical industry associations ask their member companies to improve the warnings on their MSDSs for flammable liquids that can accumulate static electricity. We hope the CSB investigation helps increase awareness about the hazards of non-conductive flammable liquids so accidents like the one at Barton Solvents will not be repeated. Thank you for watching this CSB safety video.
For more information about the CSB investigation and to view the case study on the accident, please visit our website at csb.gov. Thank you.